Intelligence, something sorely lacking these days. But today's dumpster find deals with a different kind of intelligence. Intelligence as in spies. 1940s British intelligence stars Boris Karloff and Margaret Lindsay, and a cast that mostly goes uncredited. That's early Hollywood for ya. This guy right here, Jack Mower, 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 Jack M here? Yeah, 626 acting credits. Better get a move on it, J.K. Simmons, you slacker. We start in France in 1917, yeah, where of course they are in the thick of what we now know as World War I. Apparently, this battle was supposed to be a surprise attack on the Germans, and instead the Germans found a way to surprise them. Our men walked into a deliberate trap. As opposed to one of those accidental traps. Basically, it seems there is a spy in their midst, and this has been causing, well, problems. They figure it must be a notorious German spy named Strendler. Although they know his name, they obviously don't know what he looks like. You see, it's easier to spy when people don't know you immediately upon your entrance. I'm not trying to tell anybody how to do their job, it just seems obvious to me. What about Williams? He's the best spy we have. They send for Williams to come back over from Germany to sniff out Strendler. The man sent to get Williams is told that Williams will be wearing a white smock so the contact will be able to identify him. Of course, they discuss this plan near an open window. I have a feeling Strendler's job is not very difficult here. By the way, this is the best spy the English have, apparently. Frank, the British pilot, has been in an English-based hospital for several months, and Helen, his favorite nurse, is being transferred. Helen, I think I'm falling in love with you. Well, it sucks to be you, doesn't it? Next, we see Helen in Berlin receiving a medal for her undercover work in the hospital. It seems beloved Helen, the British nurse, is a German spy. See, if she were famous, she probably wouldn't have gotten away with it. Now would she, Jimmy old boy? Helen is being transferred to England to live in the home of Arthur Bennett, the new cabinet minister, under the guise of a German war camp refugee. But one objective, to win the war. Sounds simple enough. No nation, no group of nations can stop our advance and the advance of German culture. So we meet again, hubris. Spoiler alert, a nation or two can stop Germany's advance, it turns out. Someday, Germany will own the world. One thing Helen is told of her duties in England is she will eventually be working with the infamous Strendler to do something spy-like, and she's a bit starstruck by this prospect. Valdar, the butler in the Bennett house, laments that he can't march with England and their allies because he has two bullets in his leg. When Valdar's wife and child were killed, Mr. Bennett was convinced to take Valdar in and give him a job. Sounds similar to Helen's story, so naturally this means Valdar is also a German spy and gives Helen the secret password signaling that he is one of her contacts. Always forward. Never backward. Kiss me, you devil. Valdar, telling Helen his real name is Carl Schiller, has no idea where Strendler is and tells her to wait for him to contact her. He has no soul, no conscience, nothing. But he does have pancakes every morning for breakfast. Valdar tells Helen that she is to visit Bennett's office twice a week and the secretary will pass along messages to her because of course she is also a German spy. Meanwhile, the milkman is also a German spy. How did Germany have the population to fight the war? It sounds like they were all spying around Europe. While Valdar is in the Bennett safe looking for certain papers, Helen walks in on him and he tells her he will ask for her help if he ever needs it because damn women. But when Bennett almost walks in on Valdar in the room with the safe, Helen distracts him by fainting and making Bennett help her upstairs. You're welcome, Valdar. Bennett, meanwhile, gets suspicious of the man who brought Helen to the house and the fact that he is rich but does not have the income to show for it. Because he's another German spy, of course. Out in the reception area, the secretary taps out a code to Helen on the typewriter. The man in the reception area waiting for Bennett recognizes it as the Wolfgren code and knows that the Germans are the only ones using it. They now know that the secretary is a German agent and suspect Helen to be one as well. They know they can't arrest either one of them because they are hoping one of them will lead them to Strendler. Valdar comes in and it turns out he is actually a British spy. Bennett and the boys decide to test Helen by staging a scene where a supposed German on the lamb runs into Helen's room and asks for her to hide him. When they knock on the door, she tells the man to hide in the closet. At first, she denies that anyone else is in the room, but then... I should think that you would at least insist on looking in the closet. 
Uh, okay. It turns out she knew the man wasn't Kurtz as he claimed to be, and this is how she knows. Don't you see? It's all. It means only one thing. They suspect me. There is nothing wrong with your internet. It's a glitch in the original copy of the film from which all the copies we have today were made, it seems. So. Don't you see? It's all. Don't you see? It's obvious. He's Austrian. It's a trick. It's an ostrich. Maybe we're supposed to test our spy skills and see if we can figure out how she knew it wasn't Kurtz. I am apparently a terrible spy because I have no idea. <music> Helen threatens to leave. Valdar tells her to stay until tomorrow night. British cabinet will cover every secret beating. Strandler will see they never leave. So stay in the house where something bad is going to happen, then none of us will be able to leave. Brilliant! Meanwhile, the British suspect an air raid at the same time as their cabinet meeting. Okay, so they are going to perform an air raid? Because being British intelligence, you think they would know whether there would be an air raid or not. Unless they still think Helen is a spy and the Germans will do an air raid. Or the French are notorious pranksters and air raid England just for shits and grins. Oh, scamps. Helen tries to get Valdar to bring her to Strendler. He tells her to bugger off, only in a more German way. Thompson, the man who brought Helen to the house originally, tells Helen that Valdar is working for the English and reporting all of her actions to them. He asks her to run away with him. Thompson laments on doing everything for Germany. How many millions more must die just because one man sets himself above the Almighty? Apparently a lot. Probably a good thing she ditched him because the milkman pays Thompson a visit and let's just say he utterly destroys him. Never expected to use a cow pun in a World War I movie. In a random turn of events, Frank from the British hospital returns home to the Bennett house. Dun dun dun! Well, isn't this awkward? Look here, do you mind very much telling me the truth? Can that question get any more British? That is so not true. Shut up, Chandler. She tries denying that she was the nurse in the field hospital, but eventually she admits it, and he confesses that he is still in love with her, but then... I'm a British Secret Service agent. Even your father doesn't know. Wait, 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 wait. So if she is telling the truth, Helen is a British spy disguised as a German spy who's disguised as a German war camp refugee and also as a British nurse. Meanwhile, Valdar is also a British spy disguised as a German spy disguised as a French butler. You know, maybe Bond was onto something by just letting everybody know from the get-go who he is and getting what he needs through messy fight scenes and sleeping with all of the women. Simplicity. That's what spying should be about. So why is this film in the dumpster? Not only has it fallen victim to public domain obscurity, but it also has another blow to its reputation. In 1940, when British intelligence was released, America was not yet part of World War II. But some in America saw the signs of this becoming a worldwide affair and tried to warn the public of this possibility. This film, reviewers felt, was one of those propaganda films trying to warn us of German aggression in Europe. Oh, how silly. However, there is something to be said about the difference between warning people of a current ongoing problem that could become bigger and fear-mongering through a conspiracy theory. Germany by 1940 had invaded Poland, which caused the United Kingdom to declare war on Germany. And Japan was already in war with China after the Japanese invaded Peking during the Marco Polo Bridge incident a few years earlier. So by the time this film came out, there was already a war in progress involving multiple areas of the world, so it was not a far-fetched idea to compare it to the previous Great War only a few decades earlier. It wasn't the filmmakers deciding they don't like something, so they just randomly started declaring not fair or foul or fraud. No, there was actually something going on and it seemed fair to warn people about the potential problems. But people felt it was too obvious in its message, so it was pretty well panned at the time. Actually, I think this is an interesting little film. I can say little because it's only like an hour long. If anybody needed to be warned, however, it was Helen. Because it turns out, when she told Frank she was a British agent, Valdar was on the other side of the door listening. Does he believe her? Is she even telling the truth? Is he going to turn her over to the Germans? Or does he actually side with the British and will he ask her to be his sidekick to stop Strendler? Who is Strendler anyway? We never actually saw Williams get killed in Europe earlier. Has he factored back into the story to defend the cabinet and England against the evil German spy Strendler? The movie's public domain? It's only an hour long. Hell, it's on YouTube. Find out for yourself. Yeah, you could read a synopsis somewhere, but that just makes you a party pooper. And you don't want to be a party pooper, do you? 
picking, 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 picking. I'm picking. I'm picking in the picking. 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 We have but one objective to win the war. No group of nations can stop our advance. Someday Germany will own the world. Do you mind very much telling me the truth? <laughs>